sometimes we put a lot of onus on the politician or the preacher or the other leaders of the community to kind of be doing this type of work. But I find that this type of work, it's just like when the civil rights movement was, do, was, was coming about, it is a one-on-one -on -one heart change. You can't legislate how people feel, but if we create spaces where we can be together, it makes it easier for us to understand one another. And I think, like I said, when I, when I came here with my family and we joined that African-American church, it was a safe space to ask questions with funny accents, you know what I mean? I think we're in a time where people have a lot of criticism just because of how people talk. Um, and I also wanna go back to the fact that a lot of time has passed and, and I think sometimes we, we don't pass along the stories that we should, but folks been coming over from the Caribbean here for years, for years and vice versa. Mm -hmm. When you look at some of the heroes of the American struggle, uh, when you look at people like Marcus Garvey, like, he called Harlem home just as much as he called Jamaica home because he knew he needed his brothers and sisters in America to mm -hmm. join arms mm -hmm. in the fight for, for, for uh, anti-colonial uh, what, uh, what, an anti -colonial future. So I think we got to also look at, and I can go down a list of what we know to be American civil rights leaders. I look at uh, Malcolm X, I was reading, I think his mom is from Antigua. When you look at Stokely Carmichael, his people's from Barbados. Like, but they saw themselves also as American. Mm -hmm. And I think right now we're in a time that we're so quick to label at someone else's other. When someone, I went, when I was up in New York, I had a photo shoot and uh, the young lady who was doing my um, makeup, Joss the Boss, shout out to you. Joss the Boss had me looking, whoo, perfect. So she's from Texas and we were talking about the Beyonce, uh, uh, I can't think of the name. What is the name? Coachella. Thank you, Coachella performance. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, you're late, okay? So she was explaining to me while she's doing her makeup, she was like, that is a, a form of African-American culture called, you know, with uh, football and the dance team. I'm like, what, you talking to me? Like, that's not my culture. I was like, that's very much my culture too. And I think that uh, part of what, what she misunderstood was because I said I'm from Jamaica, I also could not be American. And I was like, I don't see Beyonce represent anything but me. So I think, you know, sometimes others want to limit you in terms of who you belong to. Beyonce, I'm telling you, if you go through Latin America and the Caribbean, Beyonce belong to them too. I mean, and then you have other people in Africa and other places. When Sierra's new music, uh, level up, and she got, went to Africa to shoot those videos, <laughs> and they embrace her just as much. I think the cross culturalism that used to be seen as one African diaspora has been lost a little bit on this generation when we're trying to figure out who we are in a country like the United States that is hostile to our very existence, and you don't have that in the Caribbean. So when you have numbers, when you have a majority, or when you also um, uh, were emancipated a lot earlier than we were here in the United States, you had a lot more time to gain that confidence and to redefine blackness. So in the American experience, you're always looking at numbers that are way less than the majority. We're saying, what, 14 to 17%. So when I go to Jamaica and I look at the golf course or I look at the tennis course, I'm used to seeing black leadership. When I look at the first woman prime minister, Portia Simpson, big up yourself, and then I look at all these leaders, we're late in America. We still talking about women being able to lead. Right, right. So I have the advantage, unfortunately and fortunately, of having seen a lot, of, lot more progress and to know what I can be, where you have to literally educate yourself in the United States to re-energize your focus and to say as a black person, I'm worthy and I'm able and I'm capable despite police brutality, despite rampant microaggressions and racism in my day-to-day -day life as black men walking around. You just saw the Angela, uh, Angela Rye. Um, she posted a video on Instagram. If y'all know who she is, she comes on as a commentator on CNN. And she posted a video with, a, I think it was a doctor getting arrested mm -hmm. in the Orlando airport talking about, yeah. let me go, you're treating me like a black person. And I'm like, this speaks volumes. Even like the white doctor in Orlando knows there's this invisible but yet powerful force that is present to subjugate at every level black people no matter how much money they make, no matter what education they have, no matter you know how far quote unquote they've come, just to remind you, you are less than the poorest white guy 
in America, you know, and we, or we see you as less than that. Right. It, it's a very, it's very interesting um, uh, truth. That's that's very interesting, particularly discussing the uh, our experience and the history of our experience in this country. We faced racism in a different way. I remember uh, growing up in the '60s when uh, the riots in the, in the cities began. And it was really a time of frustration and we were trying to identify ourselves with uh, black power and James Brown, say it loud, I'm oh, black yes. and I'm proud. Oh, and yes. Those were moments where we really kind of got together to express ourselves. Absolutely. And, and obviously now with who's in the White House, we see that same, uh, the same racial issues that, never went away they no. just kind of went underground and now they've resurfaced and and it's just interesting that the world we live in today with the racist tones and the overtones that are going on around this country i don't know if you had a chance to see spike uh lee's uh, no black klansman i yeah, want to see it it's though a great i haven't film. seen it yet it's yeah. a great film yeah. and what's interesting about it is he weaves in a historical story into current day events and it really, you know, when you leave the theater, it was just funny. I went out to an area where it was predominantly white people in the theater. And they were... Fu they and, were <laughs> and, and it was so funny. When the movie ended, nobody got up right away like they normally do for an ending of a movie. They, they get up see, and leave. Yeah, they want to see what's happening. But it was, it was just so weird that people kind of sat back in their seats and just tried to digest what, what they, they just, just watched. Wow. Because it, it's so real today. I mean, yeah. and the same attitudes that were expressed in that movie are the attitudes that exist in this country today. And I think that was one of the points of uh, Spike Lee doing the film at this day and age because it was very appropriate. Shout out to Spike Lee and shout out to, isn't it Denzel Washington's son? Yeah. Who is, who is yeah. up, yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully for some awards for it. Everybody yeah. keeps saying it's really cool. Yeah, it was it's it was really interesting yeah. because you're watching him and, yeah. you're, and you're looking for a little images A little bit of, of Denzel. Ooh, I can't yeah. wait. I but can't was, wait to it, watch it. It was a great movie and uh, I would suggest people go out and see that because it's really an eye opener. Uh, it's a way to uh, so break down some of the walls that we have about uh, our, our culture. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I believe people have heard the expression that we may have come, come here by different means, but we're certainly in the same boat right now. Well, hold up. I, I would just say it like this. The majority sees you as the same thing. I, I like to remind people that sometimes, even though people are very proud of themselves culturally, I'm Jamaican, I'm Bahamian, I'm Trini, I'm whatever. When white folks see you, um, they're not asking what, what your birth certificate is. <laughs> they're literally seeing, um, and not everyone, but I'm just saying that there is a there's a feeling of of a, of a, a marginalized group, and there is not necessarily a distinction that this person is from somewhere in Africa, like Ghana or Nigeria. They are seeing a black person, and I think that's also very important to remember when we were filling out forms and we were doing things. And I, we could talk about that on the other side of the break. Some people want to put other, and I and I keep wanting to tell people that, like I understand, like I saw somebody on Facebook just post something that said like, uh, light skin girl, fair skin, um, kind of straight haired girl had posted a picture, and he was like, great, what are you mixed with? And her response was, are you ready? Nothing. I'm Dominican mulata, and I'm like, I think that means you're mixed, right? Like right, what are you? Right, right. But she thought of herself as right. Dominican and other. Right. She not mixed. So right. I was like, whoa, guys, what are we doing? Like we don't have any kind of sense right now, or that's truly right. what they feel. So I kind of feel like sometimes we're mixing up the message as to what are we talking about, and really what's important, especially to the government, when you are being counted for say a census or some other kind of uh, maybe like in your school district, they give resources based on what people put on those forms. So yes, you might think, yes, I'm different because I come from another place, but they're talking about uh, helping a marginalized group and putting resources towards whatever thing they're, 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 they're going to um, outlay those monies for. So I think we gotta be very careful with how we respond. I know you wanna be like a soldier and a hero for your culture, wave your flag, but there's a reason why they're asking you that. Are we ready to break? Hey, hey, hey. So I hope you guys are enjoying the conversation. It's Suzette Speaks. And don't forget to call us at 954-533-6499. All right. 
All American Roofing is a family operated business with over 29 years of experience. How we doing? Great, great. Don't say we're going to break. Just 